What's up guys? Okay, so today's gonna to be my first tutorial on using the GoPro Fusion. And the only reason I'm started doing this is because of my latest Instagram photo and everybody's asking me how I got that angle. So it seemed like a standard photo for me, but it seems to have impressed a lot of people. So I thought I'd share how I hold my GoPro, how I edit in uh, Fusion Studio, and just how I get those angles, because it's actually quite simple and it's a lot easier than you might expect. So my first tip is how to hold your GoPro Fusion. And what I like to do is always keep the screen facing me with the settings on so that I can see what settings I have. I can see when I've taken the photo. So I always just keep, keep the front facing camera towards myself. Um, secondly is probably the most important tip that I wish I had when I first started with my Fusion. And that is not holding the camera straight towards you like this, having the lens face you because I find that it stitches everything out of proportion and you don't actually get those, those shots that you want. It, it's a little bit off and it's not what I was looking for. So my tip is to hold it straight out in front of you and it doesn't really make sense because it feels like you're gonna get stitched out, but the way it works is that it stitches so perfectly that this angle is probably how the GoPro Fusion is meant to be held because when I'm holding it like this, I get the perfect shots that I want. So remember to always keep it out extended, basically facing outwards like that, like you're pointing this at somebody. You're just holding it like that, and that's gonna capture you. Because it's 360, you don't have to have the lens facing you, which is very weird in the beginning because you think to yourself, you're not gonna capture yourself. Sometimes you're a little bit on the side. Now, if you like directly on the sides and you're very close, like up here, you'll probably see a stitch line in your face. But even there, you, you're fine. You're not gonna see that stitch. So holding it like this is perfect because you're gonna capture that action shot. You're gonna get the shot that you want and it's the perfect angle. Um, the second tip is not extending this pole. I, I hardly extend this thing because I find that if I'm using this, the shot is so far, it might look good for a tiny planet, but if you're trying to get that high action shot where you're in the action, I find it's a little bit too far. So basically all my shots are taken just like this, the standard GoPro Fusion handle, simply hold it out in front of you. And the nice thing is this is also a tripod, so you can put it down, you can jump over the camera, you can get some cool shots if you're trying to film yourself. You don't have to have a, t a crew, you can basically put this in the middle, whatever you're doing, if you're skating, you can skate around it, and then in post-production you can change that camera angle using Overcapture or um, the Adobe plugins. So it is really simple to use, it was very frustrating for me in the beginning, but they've upgraded the software and the Fusion Studio so drastically that it's it's become a breeze. It's probably the easiest 360 I find. Um, even editing on my phone, I can see what I'm doing. And I'm using a Samsung. And before it was only iOS, they could really see the overcapture. But now on the Samsung, I'm using a, a S7, which isn't new phone at all. It's, it's probably outdated already, but it still works. So they've really made big improvements. So let's jump straight into it. I'm gonna show you how I edit, how I get my angles, and what my workflow looks like. Okay, so there are two options when trying to get your media off your Fusion. So first you open Fusion Studio, and you can either copy the front and back SD cards over, because they're obviously the two SD cards. And if your machine's a little bit slower, this would probably work out better for you, because this reduces the rendering time and the loading time. I found that on my new laptop, I can simply click browse camera media and from there it prepares the media. So you don't have to copy anything over. You just click browse camera. It works straight from your camera. It doesn't have to load anything. It just basically uses the footage on the camera, stitches everything together for you. This helps when you've got a lot of footage. I find that this helps me a lot because I don't have to stitch everything together, go through everything. I, I simply click the Fusion Studio, browse media, and when Fusion Studio opens, you can see that it takes a bit longer to load all the files because it's running straight from the camera. But the nice thing is from here, you can click what you want and you've got your footage right here. And you can basically choose the angle you want and stitch it together. So I've got quite a few files here, but I want to use the file that I used on Instagram um, because this one is the one that's getting the most attention and, and the most questions of how I got the angle. So as you can see, this, this photo looks very weird. And this is because it's 
360. It's full 360, stitched together, front and back cameras. And it's a very, little bit confusing, but once you get used to it, you can actually you can actually see what's going on. So to get the actual photo without looking at it in 3D view, you can click over capture. Clicking over capture, you see that it changes all these settings. And here's your photo, it's upside down at the moment, but I'm gonna show you how to fix that. Now you've got your ratio, 16 by nine. So if you've got a video, you click 16 by nine, puts it into that aspect ratio for you, and you can post it to YouTube, wherever you wanna do it. Um, but because we're going to post it to Instagram, I want to say four by three because that gets you the maximum real estate on the Instagram page. Okay, before we get into rotating and moving the photo around, here's your field of view. So it's quite important because say this is what you want to get. It's a good angle. But say you want to get more. You want to get like a tiny planet. You just change your field of view. How crazy is that? It changes into a little planet and you can drag that around and move it around the way you want. So let's leave it like that for now. So I can show you how to do a tiny planet. Okay, so you've got your, your pitch and roll and moving these sliders changes the image completely. Now, I'll be honest, I really don't like using these sliders because you can get very specific angles and things that you, that you wanna get, but I hate playing around with sliders in general. I like to just click and drag. So the nice thing about Fusion Studio, what they've added is click the screen, click the picture, and basically wherever you click, I mean, you can click in the middle here and rotate the photo, click a little bit to the top, you can move up and down, a little bit to the side, or you can click on the sides and move it left and right. So I always use this, I never use these sliders, and that's just my preference. So. This is a, a multi-shot, as you can see, multi-shot. It's a burst shot of 30 photos. There you can see here's one of 30. So let's just get this field of view back in. This is the only slider that I really use is the field of view to get my angle. Once we've got the way I want it, I just click and position it. And now from here, you can either just click play and it will play the burst of 30. Now, there's one of the shots that I got. And you can see the angle changes as I'm moving the angle changes of the fusion because it stitches it. Basically how you're holding it keeps that position for you. So if you're moving, it will change everything around it. So my photo on Instagram, let me just see, I think it's the next one. Just click next. Yeah, when my head hits and my face took a, a nice face punch, as you can see. Now, this is the photo that I posted and uh, I think I got the field of view just there. And from here, you basically just play around with what kind of look you want. If you want this closer, want my head closer to the action right in front of you, or you wanna just keep the horizon straight, keep it like a nice looking photo, you can do that. And that's basically it, it's that easy. So you don't have to do anything crazy to get these effects for the fusion. You basically just have to do something and you can find the angle you want. So from this photo, there are so many options. You can either go closer, you can even go fish eye where, uh, sorry, fish eye, that gives you that normal GoPro look, but it's extremely close. And uh, mind all these rolls. <laughs> uh, what you can see is that it's extremely close, but you can say 16 by nine, it gives you a nice, my 16 by 9 ratio, but it is extremely close. This is where extending the pole maybe would come in handy, but uh, I mean, I, I'm not using that. So we go back to Little Planet, get our angle again, and you can see how easy it is. Just once you've done this a few times, just getting your angle and what you want to get is so much easier. And in the beginning, I must say I was very frustrated with the Fusion because my computer was laggy, it was slow, I didn't have a good graphics card. And these all come into play. If you if you have a bad graphics card, you're either not going to be able to do this, you're not going to be able to render, you definitely won't be able to click on the screen and move it around, it's going to be jerky and laggy. And those all come into play when when editing your, your video and photos. So upgrading my laptop really did help me. And you don't need some crazy specs. Um, basically, I've only got eight gigs of RAM 
and some guys have 16, 32 gigs and they're still finding it laggy. What I found is the graphics card is the most important. So you gotta make sure that you've got a good graphics card. I've got a four gigabyte graphics card. Uh, Nvidia 940, I think it's the 940. You need the RAM on the graphics card to render this properly. So that's basically all you need. The RAM is important, but eight gigs is perfect. I mean, you'll see how fast my images render on this machine. And some guys have 16 megabytes of RAM and they're still struggling. So graphics card is everything. And also you've got to make sure that your Fusion Studio is using your graphics card and not using the, the integrated graphics on the, the laptop itself, the standard Intel graphics processor, because if it's using that, you're not going to get the full potential. Okay, so getting our angle. Now you can either click here, you can go to settings, you can see you can change the, you can do some, some minor editing getting different colors, make it a bit blue, you can change the tint, shadows and highlights, you can see it uh, changes everything, brings out the highlights, lift the shadows a little bit, sharpness, let's get a bit of sharpness. Now I don't always do this because I usually do this post, once I've got my image then I bring that into Lightroom, but it's nice sometimes just to get the best quality out of the photo first. Uh, so here's full screen, now you'll see that it looks very blurry, and you think to yourself, wow, this camera is no good at all. But this is just a very low resolution quality playback. So what you can do is click here, grab the photo. Now from here, you, you basically render this photo straight from here. You can say cool dive, or we can just leave it as this. And you say grab, here's the render, there it's done. It's already rendered. That's how quick it renders. I mean, I don't have the fastest laptop, but just having the right settings, I mean, some guys, you'll, you'll see how long you wait. I was waiting for my video renders, I was waiting up to three hours, but with this laptop, I haven't wait, waited longer than 10 minutes. So here we can open the file, see what we've rendered, and there we go. We've got that crazy angle. See my face hitting the water. And this is such a high resolution, you can basically zoom into any part and you can see the detail. It's quite crazy. The hand looks a bit weird because it stitches. That's how it's, that, that's where it stitches. And uh, I probably moved a little bit or the camera moved a little bit and it stitched a little bit funny. But I mean, you're not going to notice that in the full photo. You've got your high res photo here. You can post this. It's in the right aspect ratio. So you, you're going to get this entire photo onto Instagram and it's the maximum quality. So, I mean, this, this is amazing. Just grabbing a photo that you've moved, rendering it and there you're ready to go. So because I've got the burst, you can see I've got a whole bunch of different photos with one jump. This was just one jump into the pool on burst mode. And I mean, it's, it's limitless because now say you wanna do a little planet, you can just bring your field of view out change the angle by dragging it and that is how easy it is to get a little planet from here you can just sit, click grab photo render it make sure you tick the, both the boxes and it will render automatically so here's, here's your render queue and it's already done open the folder and there we go we've got a little planet so in the beginning I really felt that Fusion was frustrating, but uh, there have been updates and upgrades, and basically you don't get any easier than this, because now you've got all your footage here, you can go through your videos, your photos, you can just slide through which photo you want in a burst, change your angles, and you're good to go. I mean, you could just uh, say we've got this one, where I was laying on a bodyboard, which looks really weird, but you've got a full 360 photo. So from here, you can render this. You can say add to the render queue. And it brings up this box. And you can see if you want to just post this straight as a 3D photo or 3D video, you can say YouTube, Vimeo, Facebook. I always say editing because I always edit in post. And uh, that's the maximum quality, 5.2K. You can scale it down if you don't want to keep it at such a high quality. And then you've got stereo and 360 audio. Stereo, it just keeps a stereo sound throughout. And 360 audio actually moves. So if you're posting a video, if you move to the left, 
the audio will come from the left. If you move to the right, the audio will, will sound like it's coming from behind you. So it, it's like a full 3D audio because of all the mics on the 360. It doesn't get easier than that. So that's basically how I get my, my crazy shots with my 360. And it's all about experimenting with, with the angles and experimenting with what you want to do. So basically, I just jump in the pool and see what I can get. And you can just play around. I mean, you can get absolutely anything. You can take one photo, get this kind of angle, get a tiny planet. It's, it's limitless. So I hope this tutorial helps you. It's very simple, very, very easy. It's just a basic intro into editing on my Fusion and what I do personally. Nothing very technical, but anybody can do it. That's, that's the beauty of this 360 is that once you've got the software and you've got your computer set up nicely, you can basically take your Fusion out, take a whole bunch of photos, and you've got so many angles. You're not going to take it at a certain angle and miss the shot. You're going to get everything. So I hope this tutorial helps you. If you have any questions, just, just comment below um, and ask me, and I'll, I'll see if I can get back to you, and I can see if I can answer you. Like I said, I'm no expert with 360 and, and editing, but this is what I'm doing and this is what shots I'm getting. So please like and subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate it. And I'm definitely going to do a lot more tutorials. I'll do some Lightroom tutorials and maybe some Premiere Pro, the things that I do to edit. And just very basic tips because some videos are more advanced and if you're just starting out, it can be quite tricky. Help everybody that needs a little bit of advice on how to edit. So I will see you guys soon and uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll get those tutorials coming through to you.